Good evening, everyone, to the 37th weekly academic lecture of SOWAL. And the speaker of today's talk is Dr. Rajat Tripathi, who is also a mentor of mine since PhD days. Dr. Tripathi is a young researcher in the field of fluid dynamics, particularly nanofluid flow under the magnetic field environment over various geometries. Dr. Tripathi is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics, NIT Jamshedpur. He is actively, actively involved in undergraduate, postgraduate, teaching and research work. His research area of interest are magnetofluid dynamics, droplet motion, heat and mass transfer, thin film flows, and its applications. Basically, he completed his master's degree from MNIT Ilawad, and he obtained his PhD degree from IIT ISM Dhanbad under the supervision of Professor G.S. State. He received the International Travel Award under Young Scientist category to present paper in 7th International Symposium on Advanced in Computational Heat Transfer at University of Naples, Napoli, Italy. He has published more than 22 research papers and two book chapters in Journal of International Repute so far. He is an active reviewer for the top-notch journal like Microsystem Technology, Waves in Random and Complex Media, and many others. So now Dr. Tripathi is going to present a talk on the topic bubble motion is microgravity. So let us hear Dr. Tripathi now. Sir, please start your talk. Thank you, Amit, and thank you, Abhijit, sir, for inviting me. It is always nice to uh, talk about some of the works that I have carried on. So thank you for the opportunity that you have given. And I'm going to share my slides with you. Okay. Is it visible now? Yeah, it is visible now. Okay. So as uh, Amit mentioned, the topic of uh, today's talk is bubble motion in gra microgravity. So what I'm going to talk in this uh, talk today, uh, how if we consider bubble uh, inside another liquid, uh, you may all have seen uh, bubbles, bubbles of oil or bubbles of air inside water glasses or somewhere else. So bubbles move inside another fluid. So we are going to look at the bubble movement inside another liquid in the microgravity regions. That is where gravity is very, very small or insignificant, okay? So first I'll be talking about the bubble motion through another fluid in the gravity conditions. And uh, I'll discuss uh, what all are, are, what are all the forces at work that is which are playing role in the motion of the bubble. And then I'll uh, reduce that problem to the situations where gravity is not present or gravity is absent. So this is the outline of the today's uh, talk. So first I'll talk about what kind of conviction is there in the gravity, in the absence of gravity, and what kind of conviction is there in the presence of gravity. And that will lead us to the concept of Marangoni convection, the effect of Marangoni convection. Then, talk, then I'll talk about a special kind of fluid which is in which in one way is uh, different from most of the ordinary fluid, known as self riveting fluid. And then the actual uh, today's talk, that is bubble motion microgravity, that will be discussed. So first, a mathematical model will be written for the motion of a droplet through another liquid, uh, considering all the forces at work. We'll then uh, look at the results that uh, we have found and how the droplet motion or bubble motion, uh, how it is, uh, affected in the microgravity condition or how it is uh, evolved, how it evolves in the microgravity conditions. Okay. So the first, you all know that 
whatever fluid you take, it has certain properties like density, viscosity, surface tension, thermal conductivity. We know that density of a fluid is in a given volume, how much mass can be contained, right? So, for example, if we if I talk about water, then its density is almost 1,000 kilo, kilogram per meter square. If you talk about kerosene, its vol, its density is almost uh, almost one gram per centimeter cube. It is very small. And uh, viscosity, as we all know, it is the uh, the resistance offered to the motion of fluid. Uh, for example, to understand viscosity, let's say we consider uh, two glasses, two identical glasses. One is filled with water and another is filled with, let's say, honey or any other fluid, let's say some mustard oil. And if we make a small hole at the bottom of the glasses, then we'll observe that the water gets received, water recedes faster than the honey or the oil. That is because water is less viscous than the honey or the uh, oil because because of the higher viscosity of honey or the oil it recedes slower it offers more resistance to the flow so it's it recedes slower as compared to the receding of water uh, through that hole okay then uh, this surface tension property on which today's uh, more, uh, today's lecture is based on um, will be mainly i'll be mainly talking about the effect of surface tension and uh, uh, its effect on the motion or evolution of the droplet. So surface tension is actually, if you consider, let's say, just a second. Let's say you have this, it's not working. Let's say I have this a glass filled with some liquid. So if you consider the, molecule of liquid at this point, then you see that it is surrounded by similar kind of molecules. And all of the molecules in the surrounding, they exert a pressure, they exert a force on it. Or you can say that it is attracted by almost same force all around it. But if you consider this molecule at the surface of this uh, liquid, then you see that while these ends of the liquid are surrounded by the similar kind of uh, molecules, the upper end is not surrounded by these kind of molecules. So the force of attraction, which is working between the similar kind of molecules and the forces which work with this and the other kind of molecule, let's say this is air, there is in an imbalance of the force at the surface, which actually gives rise to the effect of surface tension of any liquid. So every fluid or every liquid, it has some certain tension of it. There is, if you consider water, there is a different surface tension. If you consider any other fluid, there is a different uh, surface tension at play. Okay. So today's lecture is mainly uh, focused on the surface tension of the prop surface tension property of the fluid, and then we have thermal conductivity of fluid, the property of fluid through which the heat can be transferred. Okay. It is the thermal conductivity which is uh, responsible for the transfer of heat and temperature from from one place to another. So we discussed surface tension of a fluid. It mainly is on two factors, the temperature surrounding the fluid or what is the concentration of fluid in the special in the particular case. Okay. For most of the fluids, what happens is surface tension is inversely proportional to the temperature. That is, if we increase temperature, surface tension decreases or if we decrease temperature, the surface tension will increase. Okay. So if I denote by sigma the surface tension and by t the temperature and by c the concentration, then we have these kind of relations. Sigma is inversely proportional. Sigma is inversely proportional to the concentration. Okay. So an increase in temperature will lead to the reduction in surface tension. Okay. So what happens is if we are in a situation where gravity is dominant, like Earth-like condition. So if this is some earth-like condition, okay. So if we have earth-like condition and if we consider a fluid film or any fluid lying on a solid substrate, let's say this is some solid substrate and there is some fluid over it, okay. So if we are in the earth-like condition and if we heat this solid substrate, let's say the temperature here is higher and temperature at this point is lower. Okay, so what happens is 
when this substrate is heated the molecule adjacent molecules of liquid adjacent to this substrate it becomes less dense and it expands okay so when it the upward direction so when the molecules of the liquid are moving in the upward direction due to the higher temperature here there is a void created and that void is filled by the high denser uh, fluid elements which are here okay or heavier fluid elements which are here so what happens is there is a continuous motion of liquid molecules from lower to upper end and convection okay so such kind of convections are known as natural convection or simply gravity driven convections because the it is the gravity which is causing the heavier uh, elements of the heavier molecules of the liquid to move to this position therefore this kind of convection is known as gravity driven convection okay but what if we do not have gravity okay and also for this setting of the convection for the convection to start there is a special number known as rayleigh number which is really important for the natural or gravity driven convection okay and only when the order of rayleigh number is almost 1000 or close to 1000 then only the natural convection or gravity driven convection sets in if the rayleigh number is lesser than this then the convection doesn't set in the gravity is not that significant to start the convection okay so it was observed that even when you have a situation where rayleigh number is let's say very small it is almost of the order of 1 because it is very small to the order of rayleigh number let's say this is the critical value of rayleigh number which is required for the setting of natural or gravity driven convection okay but in some situations it was observed that even when rayleigh number is of this very small order the convection was still observed people still observed convection it, in fact it was actually uh, the physicist benard who observed this convection he considered a situation where rayleigh number was of order of 1 but the convection was still there okay the practical problem that benard discussed it was actually the flow of a thin film on a solid substrate okay and it is a known fact that rayleigh number is directly proportional to the thick cube of thickness of the film okay so if d is the thickness of the film rayleigh number is proportional to d cube okay so if you take let's say d equal to 0.1 very small then you see that the order of rayleigh number is also very small it is very small okay so even in such situations the convection was still observed so it led him to believe that the uh, existing theory that the rayleigh number should be of order of 1000 he led him to believe that it is either wrong or there is some other mechanism by which the convection is setting in so, but the result that order of rayleigh number should be 1000 for the setting of convection it was an empirical relation it was observed for most of the fluids so stating that this is wrong it was not suited it was not uh, logical to say that this theory is wrong so that led benard to uh question the convection a conv kind of convection that is setting in so he believed that there is something other which is causing this convection it is not the gravity driven convection but some other kind of convection going on okay so that is where he uh, kind of uh, observed the marangoni convection so let us see how marangoni convection works even when the gravity is very small or uh, when the gravity is negligible or if the film thickness is very small how convection starts okay so consider this as the as i explained already we have a solid substrate there is a liquid here and there is some gas over liquid that is we have we have a liquid gas interface if the thickness of film is d okay and let's say the temperature of this substrate solid substrate is very high okay if this d is very small the rayleigh number is very small so there is no chance of convection setting in due to gravitational effect or due to gravity okay so in order to explain the still setting in of the convection 
he assume that let's consider a small molecule of liquid here and let's say that by some distance some dis disturbance you are forcing it to move in the upward direction it is not the uh, heating of the uh, substrate that is causing this liquid to move let's say there is some distance by which this molecule is moving in the upward direction okay now as i said for most of the liquids surface tension is inversely proportional to temperature so if this substrate is a, is at a higher temperature and this interface is at a lower temperature lower temperature means higher surface tension okay so sigma is high here okay so when a fluid particle by some disturbance it moves in this direction then because the surface tension of this fluid particle is lower because of higher temperature of substrate and surface tension at the interface is higher so this fluid particle gets dragged along this line okay if it if you disturb it in the this direction then it gets dragged along the interface okay because the particle has been displaced from its position so conservation of mass is that there is some other liquid particle which needs to come to this point to fill this gap okay so due to the gradient in the surface tension caused by the difference in the temperature there was a different kind of convection observed and this kind of convection is known as marangoni convection so this is the onset of marangoni marangoni convection or setting in of the marangoni convection due to surface tension gradient okay so even when ra or the rayleigh number was really small the observation observance of the convection is due to marangoni convection or he also did one more experiment here we are taking the substrate at the bottom and liquid at the top okay what if we reverse the situation if the substrate is at top and liquid is at the bottom then you know that if the temperature is higher the gravity is against uh, against here against the moment of heavier particle here so gravity should not uh, start the convection here the convection here was also due to the gradient in the surface tension due to the difference in the temperature and therefore the concept of marangoni convection or marangoni effect it came into picture so whenever there is a difference or there is a gradient in temperature then uh, marangoni convection it comes into play that can also be uh, said about the gradient in concentration okay because uh, the surface tension can also be changed by varying the concentration okay so there are two kinds of marangoni convection that we uh, talk about one is the marangoni convection due to the gradient in temperature or the surface tension gradient caused by temperature such kind of marangoni convection is known as thermocapillary convection whereas the gradient which is caused by the concentration the gradient in the surface tension caused by the varying concentration it is called saluto capillary convection okay and we can think of a situation where the surface tension varies not just due to one uh, thing that is temperature or concentration but it is being changed by, simultaneously by surface by uh, temperature and concentration in that case we can uh, derive the gradient in surface tension by this relation okay so here we see that surface tension can be changed either by changing temperature or concentration and such kind of marangoni convection it is known as thermosolutal marangoni convection okay so there are total three kind of marangoni convection okay okay so as i said for most of the fluids the surface tension is inversely proportional to temperature okay that is if you increase the temperature surface tension will decrease but there is this special kind of fluid for which the surface tension is not inversely proportional to temperature but it follows a different behavior okay so such kind of fluids are known as self rivetting fluid which have a parabolic uh, relation with the temperature okay so this is the graph uh, depicting the difference between any ordinary fluid and uh, surface uh, self rivetting fluid you see that if you increase the temperature the ordinary fluid the surface tension of ordinary fluid it decreases but for self rivetting fluids if we keep on increasing the temperature the surface tension first decreases 
it reaches a minimum value and then it starts increasing okay so those fluids which follow this uh, anomalous feature that is the parabolic dependence of surface tension on temperature these are known as self riveting fluid and self riveting fluids can be created by diluted uh, alcohol solutions by with increasing or higher number of carbon atoms okay if you prepare such a solution that will be a self riveting fluid and its relation with temperature is depicted by this curve and let me tell you why discussion of surface tension in the so this question of surface tension and self riveting fluid is very important because this kind of fluid particularly this kind of fluid it finds a lot of applications in a lot of industrial and engineering technology one of the foremost application of self riveting fluid is the its use in the heat pipes so what is heat pipes heat pipes are devices very small miniature devices which are used to transfer heat from one location to another location okay so i'll first explain how self riveting fluid is important for the transfer of heat before that i'll explain how heat is transferred through heat pipes okay so if we consider this rectangular heat pipe or rectangular pipe let's say this is filled with some liquid okay so if it is filled with some liquid and let's say that this end of the pipe is being heated okay so if you heat this end of the pipe what will happen the fluid here will be converted into vapor and the vapor because this end is at higher temperature this end is at lower temperature so when the fluid is heated here it converts into vapor and this vapor starts moving in this direction okay once starts once it starts moving in this direction and reaches here because this end is at colder temperature or the temperature here is not that hot so what happens is the condensation starts setting in okay and once condensation condensation starts setting in the liquid the vapor is condensed back to the liquid and in that process it releases latent heat of evaporation okay so first liquid here got vaporized due to higher temperature here it travels back to this end and at this point it got condensed back to the liquid again and in the process the latent heat of it uh, latent heat of air evaporation is released okay so one of the advantage of this kind of heat transfer mechanism is because latent heat of evaporation it is of very large quantity okay it is almost 2 mega joule per kilogram okay because it is of very large quantity so with only this small structure and a small fluid we can transfer a great deal of heat from one end to another end okay so if you have if you are working on any system and uh, let's say it is producing some heat and if you can set this heat pipe in that system then heat of that heat generated by that system can be transported to this point and you can keep your system cool okay so this works with any ordinary fluid right but we see that as i explained if you consider any ordinary fluid here then the property of ordinary fluid is its temperature on increasing its temperature the surface tension decreases okay so because this end is at higher temperature this end is at lower temperature so surface tension of liquid at this end is higher as compared to surface tension at this end because it is at higher temperature and when surface tension of liquid is higher at this end all the liquid that is here it is pulled back to this end okay and once the liquid is pulled back or attracted to this end there is no liquid to be evaporated and when there is no liquid to be evaporated the heat does not get transferred okay so for the proper functioning of heat pipe we should have a fluid which even though the temperature in, is increasing it stays put here it doesn't it should not move in this direction okay so a remedy to this problem is use of heat pipe use of self riveting fluids okay so if you use a self riveting fluid even though you you increase the temperature here the surface tension here is higher and therefore the liquid does not travel to this end it stays here and once the liquid stays here 
the evaporation vaporization and evaporation it's uh, this cycle continues and heat gets transferred okay so study of self revetting fluid in this context or for the context of uh, heat transfer is really important okay and uh, we know that it depends on uh, surface tension and surface tension it 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 follows a parabolic relation with temperature okay so considering all these things in mind the setting in of marangoni convection in the absence of gravity and the importance of self revetting fluid let us consider a problem where we have this rectangular let's say rectangular tube there is this axisymmetric fluid bubble let's say this is fluid 1 and there is some other fluid let's say some other liquid and through this liquid through this fluid 2 this fluid 1 is moving so what are all the forces at play here of course the gravity acting on this fluid and fluid 1 and fluid 2 and because these are two different fluids there is an interface of fluid 1 and fluid 2 okay so at the interface surface tension okay surface tension of the liquid the two liquids it is also at play okay so what i am going to discuss here is the motion of this bubble through another fluid when it is being driven by the gravity and the surface tension or the when the bubble is being driven by the gravity driven convection and surface tension convection okay suppose this system is let's say the bubble is electrically conducted and then if we apply some magnetic field in this direction so what happens is there are, there develops a lorentz force and then you are you have to incorporate that force also okay so in the combination of these different kind of forces which are at play the force due to gravity the force due to difference in surface tension and the presence of magnetic field we can write the navier stokes equation for this fluid okay along with this also assume that the wall of the tube it is it has a linear temperature distribution given by this t2 equal to t min and beta z okay this is presented in uh, cylindrical polar coordinate this is the radial direction and uh, this is axial direction assume that the wall of the tube it is being uh, the temperature at the wall of tube it is being distributed linearly okay beta is some temperature gradient so under this uh, setting if we write the mathematical equations okay because there are two fluids fluid 1 and fluid 2 so let's say the u1 is the velocity of fluid 1 in the radial direction u2 is velocity of fluid 2 in the radial direction fluid 2 this is for fluid 1 okay these are velocities in the radial direction w1 and w2 are velocity of fluid 1 and fluid 2 in the axial direction okay and let's say the temperature of fluid 1 and fluid 2 these are de denoted by symbols t1 and t2 okay and uh, pressure working on fluid 1 and fluid 2 let's say it is denoted by p1 and p2 okay so if we if we keep this signs keep this uh, notations in mind then we can write the governing equation of motion that is navier stokes equation in this way okay so this is the continuity equation which is at play okay conservation of mass gives you this continuity equation in the cylindrical polar coordinate then we have momentum equation in the radial direction okay because we are assuming that the droplet is only moving in the axial direction so its velocity in the radial direction is constant so when you write the momentum equation for the velocity for the fluid 1 and fluid 2 in the radial direction you only have these relation there are no u and w terms okay but because the fluid is moving in the axial direction so we will get momentum equation in axial direction like this for fluid 1 and this is the momentum equation in axial direction for fluid 2 okay this term corresponds to the gravity driven convection this is due to viscous drag and this is the term coming out due to presence of magnetic field okay so we have these set of equations and because we have considered 
the temperature distribution to be linear here so there is also going to be a temperature balance equation for fluid 1 and fluid 2 okay so energy equation or temperature balance equation for fluid 1 and fluid 2 these are given by this equation number 7 okay so these are set of equations which needs to be solved to understand the dynamics or motion of the bubble through another fluid so in order to solve it what we do is we uh, use the non dimensionalization so that there is no uh, complexity due to different dimensions of different uh, variables coming in here so we use this non dimensionalization yes this equation number 8 to non dimensionalize the given equations and once we non dimensionalize the given equations these are the form of continuity equation balance of momentum equation for fluid 1 and fluid 2 in radial and in axial direction and energy balance equation or temperature balance equation okay now in order to solve it we should also discuss the conditions which are imposed at the boundary okay so these these are the conditions which are imposed at the boundary okay in order to understand these conditions we need to look at the zometry once again and the non dimensionalization because the conditions are written as r equal to 0 r equal to 1 and r equal to d okay so if we look at the geometry once again then r equal to 0 means here okay and if you look at the non dimensional non dimensional parameters r equal to 1 means r r dash equal to 1 means r equal to a and r equal to a for this system is r equal to a means at the ball of this tube and r equal to b means at the interface of fluid 1 and fluid 2 okay so let us first discuss the boundary conditions so at r equal to 0 that is at the center of uh, center of the fluid 1 we have these conditions u1 equal to 0 means the fluid 1 that is the droplet it is not moving in the radial direction it is only moving in the axial direction del w over del w1 over del r equal to 0 means the axial velocity of droplet it is not it is it doesn't change in the radial direction it remains same and del t1 over del r equal to 0 means there is no gradient in the temperature in the radial direction r equal to means one means the boundary of the tube we have imposed this condition beta z at the boundary and because the tube is not moving therefore fluid velocity of fluid 2 in the radial and axial direction both are at zero okay but at r equal to b that is at the interface of bubble and the fluid at the interface of bubble and fluid we should have the continuity equation continuity condition that is the radial velocity at this point of fluid 1 and 2 should be equal axial velocity should be equal and temperature should be equal at the uh, wall okay this tells us that the temperature of fluid 1 in the radial direction gradient in the temperature of fluid 1 in the radial direction is same as gradient in the fluid gradient of the fluid 2 in the radial direction okay and uh, this is the condition which we write due to the effect of surface tension okay due to the effect of surface tension or self riveting property of the fluid we write this this is the laplace pressure balance equation and the last equation this is the tangential stress balance equation okay so we see that uh, because uh, as I explained, when the molecule of the fluid moves in this direction, it gets dragged along the boundary. So that's why we have this tangential stress balance uh, equation, which is a kind of uh, boundary condition for this problem. Okay. So if you if you observe these equations, then you see that all these equations are linear. Okay. So given the equations and the conditions, we can find an analytical solution of this problem. Okay. So because the equations are linear 
and the conditions are uh, there are abundant number of conditions so we can easily solve it to find we can easily solve it analytically to find the solution okay so equations are solved and we got these results for temperatures of fluid 1 and fluid 2 okay this is the expression of surface tension for self rivetting fluid it is written in terms of two non dimensional numbers capillary number and marangoni numbers it depends like this and if you look at the momentum equation for fluid 1 and 2 in the radial direction then you see that the pressure is independent of a radial direction it is only function of z and t okay so using all these uh, equations and boundary condition we can solve these equations okay and we can obtain expression for pressure gradient velocities in the uh, radial and axial direction of fluid 1 and fluid 2 okay <clears throat> now in order to discuss the results of this flow let's just look once again at the flow uh, diagram okay so what we have here is this end of the tube is closed right this end of the tube is closed and the motion of the bubble that is occurring here it is due to the volume flux volumetric flux of fluid 1 that is how the volume of this droplet is changing with respect to time or how much the volume uh, gets altered when we increase time or decrease time okay so mainly this motion is occurring due to the volumetric flux of fluid 1 okay so if you come if you co uh, compute volumetric flux of fluid 1 then it actually comes out there is an expression written for it here these are giving the volumetric fluxes of fluid 1 that is droplet and this is for fluid 2 and using the expression of w1 and w2 which has been obtained here w1 and w2 we can write the expression for volumetric flux of fluid 1 and volumetric of flux, volumetric flux of fluid 2 okay since this end is closed therefore the mass of conservation it dictates that the total volumetric flux should be zero had it not been closed if it had been a condition like this then we should have equated the total volumetric flux equal to the applied volumetric flux let's say qa okay but because it is zero there is no flux coming through here so total volumetric flux of fluid 1 and fluid 2 it is equal to zero okay so when we use the expressions of w1 and w2 the volumetric flux of fluid 1 q1 it came into this form z times marangoni numbers times this function phi ma of bma and delta rho phi g bma where phi ma and phi g these are denoting the contribution of marangoni convection to the volumetric flow okay phi ma denotes the contribution due to marangoni convection to q1 and phi g denotes the contribution due to gravitational effect to q1 okay because we have this nice expressions for phi ma and phi g with respect to this variable b okay so if we set different values of n we can plot phi with respect to b and phi, phi ma with respect to b and phi g with respect to b okay so once we plot the graphs for the contribution due to marangoni convection and contribution due to uh, uh, gravity driven convection then we have these graphs for different values of n n is actually relative viscosity the different graphs that we see it is for relative viscosity of fluid 1 and 2 okay so once we draw this graph we can uh, get some conclusions out of it okay we see that this is the flux contribution due to gravitational effect and we see that it is always positive it is never negative okay whereas if you this is phi g with respect to b and this is phi ma with respect to b b is the radius of bubble okay the bubble that we have taken its radius is taken as b okay so we see that the contribution due to gravitational field it is never negative whereas the contribution due to marangoni convection it is positive only up to certain extent only up to a critical value of p and after that 
we have a negative contribution due to marangoni convection okay it is clear that only for this value of b which is almost 0.35 b equal to 0.35 there is a positive contribution due to marangoni convection and then there is a negative contribution after this value of b okay so please keep this in mind this is going to help us in analyzing the motion of the bubble that is shape and position of the bubble now in order to discuss how the shape of the bubble will change with time that is if you just let the bubble float under the uh, forces mentioned okay and if we need to observe how the shape is going to change then we have this uh, kinematic condition which the radius with the radius of bubble satisfies okay to be db over dt plus del q1 over del z equal to 0 flux of the bubble and b is the uh, bubble radius okay so if you see the expression of q1 if you see the expression of q1 because we need to differentiate it with respect to z there is no z term here okay because there is no z term here so del q1 over del z it only consists of ma into phi ma b ma okay it is when you differentiate q1 with respect to z you get only this term this is zero okay so when it is when you solve it you simply get m into phi ma nb divided by 2b okay so from this we can discuss the shape of bubble uh, the evolution of bubble when time increases okay so we see that if you again look at the graph of phi ma okay we see that phi ma is only positive when b is less than this critical value okay let's say the critical value of the radius is 0 0.35 then we see that phi m is and b is less than 0 0.35 or let's say this is the critical value bc okay so phi m is positive only for b less than 0 0.35 okay and we see that when phi m is positive marangoni number is a constant it is a positive constant so when phi m is positive this whole quantity is negative and what is dv by dt less than zero means it means that the bubble radius will decrease with time right dv by dt less than zero it means with the increase in time or with the progress of time the bubble radius will decrease okay but if we consider b to be greater than 0 0.35 if b is greater than 0 0.35 then we see that phi ma is negative and phi ma negative means phi ma negative means this whole quantity is positive and then we have db by dt greater than zero and db by dt greater than zero means the bubble radius will increase with time right so that can be confirmed by drawing uh, the bubble radius b with time okay the critical value of bubble number it can be uh, found by putting phi ma bc n equal to 0 and we see that it is almost 0 0.35 okay so the facts that i read uh, i explained here it is written here for b less than b ma is positive and for b greater than bc phi ma is negative okay so there is this graph plotted for the radius of bubble okay this is plotted when b is you see that b is between 0 and 0.35 and we see that when time increases the radius of bubble decreases and this is plotted when b is greater than 0 0.35 and we see that the radius of droplet it increases with time okay one more thing that we can observe from here because db by dt it doesn't contain any phi g term there is no phi g term here so absence of phi g term he, the shape of bubble it is totally driven by marangoni convection the gravity doesn't play any role in the deformation of shape okay whether it is getting widened or getting shrunk uh, shrunk it doesn't it is not dependent on the contribution due to gravity or gravity is not affecting the shape of bubble okay so these are the two important conclusions that we are uh, made from here okay 
so that is how we uh, predict the shape of bubble how it is going to behave when time increases okay let us now predict how the position of bubble will change okay you have this uh, bubble in the tube okay let's say this is at z equal to 0 okay let's say the front end of the bubble is given uh, denoted by zf and back end is denoted by denoted by zb okay so let us now see how the position of the bubble will change with time okay so predicting the position of the bubble of the droplet so if if the front end and back end are at zf and zb then we can write the center of mass of the bubble as the average of front end and the back end right this is zf plus zb by 2 and as i already explained the fluid is moving due to the volumetric uh, flux therefore we have this relation for the front end and the back end okay for the front and back end we have this relation between the radius of the bubble and the volumetric flux okay so if you add these two equations and uh, look at this relation then we can determine this relation that is rate of change of center center of mass of the bubble with respect to time and you see that it depends on the value of q1 at z equal to c divided by b square okay z equal to c is the location of center of mass okay now if you look at the value of q1 value of q1 you have found here z ma phi ma b ma plus delta rho phi g b ma okay so q1 at c means we need to put z equal to c and therefore we got this equation okay so for the position of the droplet we have this relation dc over dt which is evaluated into the outer space okay let's say there is an experiment going on in the outer space where gravity is negligible okay so if gravity is negligible only the marangoni convection is the dominant form of convection there okay dominant form of convection so let us analyze the position of the bubble in the absence of gravity or in the microgravity region okay so in order to analyze it that is if we consider the absence of gravity or reduced gravity then we should have phi g equal to 0 and phi g equal to 0 means we can write this equation simply as dc over dt equal to c ma phi ma over b square okay again if you look at the equation that we have here for the shape of bubble db by dt is ma phi ma by 2b and dc by dt is c ma phi ma by b square so we can get a relation between dc by dt and db by dt okay that is if you consider equation number 35 and equation number 39 then we can develop this relation between the evolution of position and evolution of shape of the bubble okay so this can easily be solved and uh, if let like because it is a first order equation we can easily solve it if ci and bi are initial position of the bubble ci is the initial position and bi is the initial radius of the bubble then the position of the bubble can be predicted by this simple equation okay now we need to observe one more thing here because we know that when geo is less than b is less than bc when b is less than bc we observed that the shape of bubble or the radius of bubble decreases with time now when b was less than bc we observed that radius of bubble decreases with time 
okay so if b decreases with time what happens to c it increases with time okay when b is decreasing c will increase so when b is less than bc the position of c is increasing okay c is at higher position but when b is greater than bc we know that b increases and when b increases that's it, that is the uh, radius of the bubble increases the position of the bubble c will decrease okay so how can we interpret it in the physical sense we can interpret it in the physical sense by these graphs okay so these are the graphs for the position of the center of mass of uh, droplet plotted with respect to time okay this is the graph plotted when bc uh, when we take when we took the value of initial radius as 1 by 4 okay that is when b is less than the critical value okay and we see that when b is less than the critical value the c is getting increased in either direction okay that is when b is less than the critical value the bubble moves away from the origin okay the bubble that we have here if b is less than bc this bubble moves away from the origin okay if if, if it moves in the other direction there to it moves away from the origin if it is moving in the forward direction then to it is moving away from the origin whereas if we take the initial radius to be more than bc because bc is 0.37 almost so when initial radius is more than 0.37 that is 1 by 2 then we see that the bubble is converging toward the it's toward its initial position and a bubble is not going away from the origin but if it is here and when b is greater than bc it is moving towards the center of mass or towards the initial position okay if it is here then to it moves towards the origin or towards the center if it is in the other direction then to it moves in the towards the center of mass or towards the original position of the bubble okay so if we combine all these results then we can say that because we know that when b is less than bc that is the critical value of bc the bubble radius it decreases with time and decrement of radius means that if initially it was looking like this it will now look like this okay and if we assume that the volume of bubble is constant okay so if the length of bubble is l and the volume of bubble is constant then an expression for volume can be written as simply b square into l so if v is constant and b decreases decrement of b means l increases okay so that means when b that is the bubble radius is less than this critical value the bubble it its uh, radius decreases that is it gets thinner but it length its length increases that is it gets lengthier okay so when b is less than bc with the progress of time it gets thinner and lengthier however when b is greater than bc we know that when b is greater than bc the radius of bubble increases with time and radius of bubble increases with time it means length of the bubble decreases okay so increase in length and decrease in length means the bubble gets wider and shorter okay so that kind of analysis we can make by solving uh, these linear equations and similar results we can draw for uh, uh, position of the bubble as well okay sir okay sir so uh, thank you for reminding me about the time so the, these kind of analysis we can uh, make simply by uh, writing the navier stokes equation okay up until now all this is all this discussion was done when we considered the magnetic field to be zero so or, or in the absence of magnetic field okay if you consider the presence of magnetic field that is if you allow the magnetic field to alter the motion of bubble then we can draw some more conclusions about it and we see that from these two graph when we increase the magnetic field you see that magnetic field is increasing when magnetic field increases this is contribution of gravity to volumetric flux 
so we see that with an increasing magnet magnetic field gravitational contribution decreases okay whereas with an increase in magnetic field marangoni convection contribution due to marangoni convection it also decreases okay so in that way we can think of magnetic field as a controlling parameter okay so whenever the experiment is performed we can control the motion of bubble we can control the contribution of gravity and marangoni convection just by varying the magnetic field and uh, this is graph for different values of magnetic field for uh, radius of bubble with respect to time and we see that an increase in magnetic field leads to a decrement in the bubble radius okay so uh, that's that's the analysis that was all about this topic okay these are the conclusions and references thank you sorry sir i took some extra time yes sir excuse me sir am i audible ah, yes sir yes yes amit you are audible okay. okay so first of all thank you so much uh, so much sir for your nice presentation so i have one question basically yes, as the fluid surface tension is directly related to the temperature so yes. in general we can conclude that the surface tension decreases as the temperature increases so almost all the ordinary so fluids, under yes. uh, various conditions it, it if, yeah yeah uh, under various conditions it may differ or it is in the general um, uh, in general we can say that on which uh, this result will hold as i said if you consider different kind of fluids or uh, as i said if you consider an aqueous solution and increase the number of carbon atoms in it okay then the nature of surface tension and temperature it can be changed and same is true for uh, the concentration if you add some surfactant into the liquid its nature can be changed so one more question is here as yes, per your results the ball moves away from initial position when we initial radi uh, when initial radius is less than critical value yes while uh, we are getting a different result when initial radius is more than critical value yes, what sir. is the physics behind it sir okay because you see that let me go there again you see that when b is less than this critical value what happens then yes. then the contribution of marangoni convection is positive and a positive contribution of magnetic marangoni convection means let's go to uh, that symmetry here okay the positive contribution of marangoni convection means the force which is at play at the interface okay it is it is yes. higher okay when positive contribution means it is higher so force is higher it, it means the dragging force which is working on the interface it is higher therefore if there is more force it moves away from the origin okay but yes. if uh, the con marangoni convection is smaller the drag force is really less so it is not getting dragged away but it is pulled back due to the presence of gravity okay so it all depends on which force is uh, getting which force is dominating which force okay so when M b is less than bc marangoni convection dominates g dominates gravity and bubble moves away but if marangoni convection is smaller than g then gravity dominates and it pulls the uh, bubble towards the center towards the initial position yes yeah, yes okay thank you sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. If if we apply a magnetic field, yes, Lorentz force also acts. no sir it is it is not necessary as i explained in the last uh, uh, last figure if we wish to control the marangoni convection okay because uh, if if i explain one more uh, application of it the, such kind of analysis is used in growing 
crystals in the microgravity regions because when we grow crystals in the gravitational field it reduces the quality of crystal so when we grow crystals in the microgravity conditions their marangoni convection affects the quality of crystal and in order to not let the marangoni convection affect the quality of crystal we use magnetic field to reduce the effect of marangoni convection yes sir okay sir thanks shalini thank you shalini ma'am hello sir shalini ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> sir shalini only not shalini ma'am okay, shalini ha <laughs> <laughs> yes sir thank you sir sab badhiya okay ha mit bata हाँ यस सर यस सर thank you sir thank you for inviting me and uh, uh, present, giving me a chance to present one of the work that i have done with my student thank you sir thank, thank you so much sir once again thank for the nice presentation thank you amit thank you sir